remember that in the 1990s, there was a death warrant out for Mumia's execution on three occasions. So on three occasions, the state almost killed Mumia Abu-Jamal, but a national and international movement halted those, um, halted those executions, and now, after 30 years of struggle, we have won. This is a victory, unequivocally, for any of you who witness the execution of Troy Davis, right? The execution of Troy Davis, I think it was in November or in October. We, we can all say that this is a victory. This is a victory against the death penalty in the United States and the use of violence on the part of the state, but it's a half victory because as Mumia has said, life in prison without parole for an innocent man is essentially tantamount to slow death, to a slow um, death penalty. Um, but uh, some people have actually suggested that this decision on the part of the state to release Mumia from death row could in fact mean a demobilization of the movement to free Mumia because the threat of death is no longer hanging over his head. Without the threat of death hanging over his head, perhaps, people will go home and stop fighting. However, I think that that couldn't be farther from the case. In fact, I think that the fact that the state has given in an inch has meant that the entire conduct of the case from beginning to end has now been called into question. If the state now acknowledges that Mumia's sentence was unconstitutional, doesn't that call into question the entire conduct of the case, not just the sentencing but also the conviction? So in fact, I think that we are at a new stage in this case, at a stage that we've never been before. For the last 30 years, we've been fighting with the banner Free Mumia, but in fact, our struggle has been organized mainly around keeping the state from executing Mumia. That's it, essentially. For the last 30 years, we've been trying to hold the line and keep the state from executing Mumia. Now, for the first time, we can actually talk seriously about the release of Mumia Abu-Jamal from prison. And in fact, the decision of the Supreme Court to call his death sentence unconstitutional has given our side much more confidence and much more possibility than ever. Why? Because one of the unintended consequences of the Supreme Court decision was that it happened alongside of a sea change in the world and in American history. It happened in the context of the Arab Spring. It happened in the context of Tunisia. It happened in the context of um, Egypt. But it also happened in the context of the execution of Troy Davis, which transformed consciousness in American society. It also happened in the heels of the Occupy Wall Street decision. So in uh, of the Occupy Wall Street movement. In September, Occupy Wall Street captured the imagination of the nation and the world. In October, Mumia was released from, uh, uh, Mumia's death sentence was held unconstitutional, and Occupy Wall Street protesters started chanting, free Mumia. So essentially, the fact that this decision has happened in this different conjunctural moment has opened up the possibility to actually build a movement to free Mumia Abu Jamal. The decision has also happened in the context of the public publication of a very, very important book written by Michelle Alexander entitled The New Jim Crow, which is essentially an analysis of the ways in which the American prison system has created a new kind of slavery in the prisons in which it disenfranchises and incarcerates a disproportionate number of black people, of people of color. And you should know that this book is now being read 
in working class black communities, in churches, in universities, and all over the United States. So we are in a situation that for the first time, we can think about Mumia's freedom. I want to just say finally, I want to say finally that I visited uh, Maroon Schultz, uh, who's another prisoner in Pennsylvania, a former uh, radical revolutionary and activist of the black movement in the 1970s, and I asked him, Maroon, he's a brilliant thinker, do you think that our call right now for Mumia's release is, um, is a pie in the sky? Do you think that this is possible? Um, and he said, no one imagined that the fall of Mubarak was possible in January. And he fell in, in, a, in a month. So if Mubarak can fall in Egypt, uh, the place where no one imagined uh, could be penetrated, this is really the moment to free Mumia Abu-Jamal and release Mumia Abu-Jamal because all of the forces have aligned themselves to give people a sense of possibility. To that end, we are launching a three-pronged campaign to release Mumia and we ask you to join us. In the United States, we have called uh, on the international community to argue to the United States that for 30 years, Mumia was unconstitutionally tortured on death row. On that basis alone, he should be released. So that is the first part of our uh, campaign, an international campaign to put pressure on the American government to release Mumia Abu-Jamal on the basis of torture. Second, we are launching on April 24th, that is the day of our action, an Occupy the Justice Department movement in which we will hold a civil disobedience action in the Justice Department in Washington um, uh, in the United States. It's called Occupy the Justice Department and this is a protest We are launching um, with a civil disobedience action because there has been a request for a civil rights investigation into this case, which has not even be, been answered by the government, by Eric Holder. So we've petitioned, we've written letters, we've emailed the Justice Department, they have not responded, and now we are going to go to Washington and we expect to have at least a thousand people get arrested in a civil disobedience act. And the final uh, campaign is the challenge to the DA's office in Philadelphia. We are asking the DA to release Mumia Abu-Jamal on the basis that there is documented police corruption and tampering with evidence uh, in this case. We understand that if Mumia is going to be released, the people of Philadelphia are going to have to better understand this case. As you might imagine, the ruling class in Philadelphia has manipulated the consciousness of the people in Philadelphia. In order to counter that, we are launching a campaign in Philadelphia to shift consciousness called Meet Mumia, Free Mumia, in which Mumia will be calling churches working class communities, universities in Philadelphia, um, to talk to the audience uh, about the things that he talks about, injustice, not his case, but injustice the world over. And so this is our three-pronged approach as we initiate this new phase uh, in the movement. And there are things happening right here um, in Germany and in Berlin that you can participate in to help us in this effort. The first thing you should probably do is write to Mumia. Uh, his address and postcards are available downstairs at the information stall um, for the Free Mumia Abu Jamal Coalition here in Berlin. Secondly, you should support his defense. I am part of the legal team and I will tell you that we've reached the end 
of the appeals process in the case of Mumia Abu Jamal. The only thing that will get Mumia back into trial is new evidence, the emergence of new evidence that could not previously have been discovered without due diligence. Those are the terms of uh, the kind of new evidence that would get Mumia into trial. That means that we have to conduct a million dollar investigation. We believe that Mumia is innocent and there are people out there who know that he's innocent. We need to find those people, we need to find that evidence and you can help us by donating to us. Thirdly, the folks here in Berlin are organizing um, a project to build the longest banner for Mumia and do something with that uh, in the future. And they're asking you to help them draw that banner. You can get the information downstairs in the info stall. And finally, on April 21st, there's going to be a free Mumia demonstration at 4 p.m. in front of the Rosa Luxemburg Plaza, right here in Berlin. So essentially, on April 21st, you are going to demonstrate here in Berlin. And our next stop, and you should join us in America, is April 24th in front of the Justice Department, during which we're going to occupy the Justice Department. So these are all of the things that you can do in this moment of possibility. Again, there is a sea change in American society. Before Occupy Wall Street, people were not, people felt frustrated and uh, unhappy with the state of affairs, but there was a complacency. And Occupy Wall Street essentially captured the imagination of a new generation of activists and fighters for social change. Again, we're in a moment like no other, and we ask you to join us to free Mumia and to transform our world to essentially bring down uh, the system of capitalism, which we know is ultimately responsible for uh, both class inequality, but the kind of racism that has incarcerated so many people of color, including immigrants um, in the United States. I thank you uh, for coming. I thank the organizers of this conference. I thank Young Welt for Jung Welt for uh, for uh, publishing Mumia's uh, commentaries week in and week out. Mumia could not have been uh, uh, released to general population without your support, without your protests, without your letters. So uh, from Mumia's cell to the Rosa Luxemburg conference, we say thank you and we say onwards to a new world.